Obviously, um, you know, they had a big win against Princeton there in, in, the, in the tournament. Um, James Jones is a great coach. He was uh, Caleb and, and Jaden's U19, one of the coaches on that staff um, last year. And he's been at Yale for a, a long time. He's done a really good job. They've had a lot of success in the NCAA tournament. Um, obviously, during the pandemic, they didn't have a season last year. So those guys all either are newcomers and didn't play last year or guys that just had to wait, you know, a year. Um, but they're a very good basketball team. Obviously, Swain leads them um, in scoring. They can really, really score the ball. But they have a good team. They, they have guys that play hard. They got some really interchangeable pieces that can defend on the wing, kind of those combo forwards, the three, four guys, um, really cause problems for people the way they can, you know, guard different people, switch some things, and just kind of mix it up. But it, it's going to be a it's going to be a tough game for us. I, I know our experience last year, the tournament. And it's something I've talked about a lot is like our guys respected North Texas. North Texas was a very good team. They proved it and they beat us. But our team respected it and our team respects Yale. We know this is going to be a hard fought game. We've asked you this question at various intervals of the season, but what what's the biggest thing right now for your team to be as good as they can be? Don't turn the ball over, just like it was at various times during the season. So it just, you know, you have your reference points. Um, but I think the one that came up to me that I talked to our guys about was we were so bad in the first half against Indiana taking care of the basketball, and then we went on a six-game winning streak. You know, so, like, once again, we, you know, don't don't take care of the basketball in the Iowa game after we take care of it in the Penn State and the Michigan State game. And so hopefully we can go on a six-game winning streak after that. But it's one of those things that doesn't go away. Like, we'll, we'll really do well in a three, four game stretch, and then all of a sudden it pops up again. So we just have to make better decisions and uh, keep the game simple. Just managing it at this point, managing it. Right. Just... Yeah, just watching film. Anytime guys are doing it, whether it's uh, one guy passing across his body, um, you know, guys not facing their facing up and squaring their shoulders, throwing the ball out of the post, um, leaving your feet on passes, like we had two or three of those. Um, a lot of times when you have 17, it's like a – like a eight different turnovers, you know, out of 17. And so you get one, one, you get another one three times, you get another one two times. So it's a little bit of everything. You get a three seconds, you get an offensive foul. Um, for us, it was, I, I thought the other day, it was just the carelessness of the passes, just not being fundamentally sound. It was more straight passing than anything. Uh, you're obviously, obviously undefeated in non-conference play. Now you kind of, kind of get away from the Big Ten a little bit. Does the game change at all? It's a good question. I think a lot of people think things open up more um, in the NCAA tournament. I don't know how things are like called differently, but I know this. They want to impress the people that are making decisions to go to the next game to referee. I do know that. And I think guys are a little sharper you know, as they get two, three, four days off here and get ready for the NCAA tournament. And if they you know, get assigned a game, you know, they want to try to get to that second game and just keep going. No different than a team. And I think they're going to call things in terms of freedom of movement on drives by Ivy or post play, two hands in the back, which was non-existent in our league this year for Zach and uh, Kofi and a couple other guys. I just don't understand how that can't get called in the NCAA tournament. But, you know, we'll see. The one thing that we've really tried to fight, you know, whether it's Jaden or it's Travion or it's Zach um, with some of those calls is not, not to complain and just to play through it and be able to play through some tough calls. But, you know, you would like to think that some of those things would be more closely called. You first come across the Yale coach. Was it at USA Basketball or was it something else? Kind of no, I've, how your I've, relationship Yeah, no, no, no. It's, uh, um, just knowing him through the year, I coached one of his guys um, in 2009 on our World University um, team that I coached. I think it was 2009, maybe 10. Get my years messed up. No, 2009, I was an assistant. Um, what year is Draymond Green before his senior year? 2000, he was 2012, 2000. he was in. So it'd be 2011. So 2011, one of his players was on our team. And so obviously he came there. But I've known him through the years from different things. I know his brother is the head coach at Boston. And so both those guys are great guys. And, you know, basketball lifers, you know, guys that have been in, you know, forever. And, you know, will coach forever. And, um, you know, obviously James did a really good job. He's been the tournament, I think, was it three out of the last five years? I think I read somewhere. So I, that's impressive, you know, to have to get into your tournament and win your tournament. And, you know, you fight to get at-larges, but it's so tough when 
we've got to play some guarantee games and do some different things from a non-conference standpoint. You obviously mentioned the keys uh, for this game, obviously not being turning the ball over, but when you look at Yale and just the Ivy League as a whole, it seems like those teams do a good job of forcing turnovers just yes. across the league. Just yep. What is it about their defense, their style of play, I guess, across the Well, for them, I, you know, they, they have good athleticism. They have good length. They kind of have those energy. I think sometimes when people think of length, they always just, it's positional length. You know, are, are you long and athletic for the two spot? Are you long and athletic for the three spot? You know, they have a lot of guys at the one, two, three, and then the, those three, four combo forwards that they have, they can do a lot of things, you know, in terms of quickness, switching, you know, being around the basketball. So I think that's probably jumps out more than anything. But the, the style of play in that league, like obviously they run good offense, they have great coaches in their league, and so they're, they're prepared. You know, they're prepared for this moment. You know, they say guards win in March. What do you need from Jaden here in the next couple of weeks? You know, just let things, weeks. same thing as all season, like, you know, just let things come to him. But be aggressive. Like the one thing, you know, when you try to curtail some of his aggressiveness, you don't want to take away from the aggressiveness. You, you still want him to be in attack mode, but just take what they give him. When they put two, three, four people on the ball, you know, be under control, get the ball out of your hands, use your dribble throughs, you know, things of that nature. Just keep it simple when they get aggressive. But when he has space, you know, we want him to attack, especially in transition and uh, in some of those open court ball screen things that we do. Uh, just the one, the one and one issue for your team is how much is that? Yeah, exactly. How much does that? I guess. How much of a problem is that? It seems like that's probably one of the more deflating things that can happen with basketball. Tough question, you know, but it's you know I try to get them to be process based yeah. in terms of decisions. Like make a good decision, you're probably going to get a good reward. But when you don't get a good reward and you make a good decision, be it's okay with it. Like no one's going up there trying to drop kick the ball in from the free throw line. They're trying to do their routine, knock down free throws, you know, and they miss it. But yeah, it's it's when you miss those four front ends, you know, it's it's a turnover. It's not a pick six where they're gonna score, but it's a turnover. It's it's a it's a ball that gets kicked out in the stands. It's a double dribble, you know, and so we gotta make them pay. I thought we did a good job, you know, in, in getting back in some games or like now we needed to extend some things a couple times that we just weren't able to. Now in the Iowa game, we're trying to, you know, you're trying to get back, and we did. Yeah. But we, you know, if you have some of those plays, even if you split them, say you hit the front end of all four and you miss the second one, you're still helping yourself. You're still, you know, but when you're not making somebody pay for fouling you, you know, you're, you're hurting yeah. your chances. Uh, just kind of one last thing for me. How did Brandon play in the Big Ten tournament outside of the shooting? I thought he did some good things. I thought he really challenged shots well defensively. And uh, he had a couple tough ones there in the Iowa game where they hit shots on him. Um, but I, I thought he did a good job. I thought his attention to detail was good. Um, and he played hard. Obviously, when you go through what he does, you know, you're you're going to be a little bit more excited than anybody else. You're, you're going to really try to do the things that the coaching staff wants you to do because you want to stay out there. You, you, you appreciate things a little bit more. It's, you know, it stinks that he has to go through that or I went through that. Um, but give him credit for what he did. He, we don't win that Penn State game without him. Usually at this time of year, coaches tear back their rotation. Don't play as many yeah. guys. Are you still committed to the 9 or 10? It's or a good question. Going to depend on situation. Yeah, I'm, I'm situational at this point with stuff. If we they go bigger, obviously, um, Caleb plays. If it's smaller, like I just thought, like, uh, Mason did a good job on Keegan Murray. Ethan Morton did a really good job on Keegan. Getting someone a little bit more mobile on him, I thought, was going to help with that so that's why I made that decision and then Shrews you know knew us like the back of his hand and so he was going to run Isaiah into that post um he you know he he was just going to put us in binds there and play those four guards and and, and that was going to be tough for some guys and, and so that those matchups kept some people out and um but that was that's kind of a rare deal when somebody understands it exactly but at that point and the game got so close it was it was really hard especially the way we started um but no it's it ends up being circumstantial i go into games like thinking it like you know brandon had really played well in practice for two or three days really shot the ball well and it was just you know pick it back you down and the size as a guard is, is really really hard as they get in there and uh then Lundy is a guy that can make tough shots and go over you and just was like getting a bigger guard out there. But also they were playing a lot of different defenses, trying on two, boxing one, not guarding certain people. And, like, you know, Brandon can make open shots. And so 
that kind of combination right there, as we struggled a little bit to give him that opportunity, I thought made sense.